Well, yeah. Hello. Welcome, everybody, uh, to the talk, Real-Time Chat on the Web. Um, I'm JC. Um, the Dutch people will be able to pronounce my name easy. It's Jan Karel. Um, so uh, this is about real-time chat using XCPP and a JavaScript library called Converse.js. I'm not going to really go much into what XMPP is. Um, I don't have a lot of time, quite a few slides to show, but just uh, as a quick overview, it stands for the Extensible Message and Presence Protocol, which kind of explains quite a lot of what it's about. It was originally known as Jabber and um, used for instant messaging, also for signaling, uh, for example, video conversation, uh, con conferencing or uh, file sharing or also lately using for in Internet of Things applications for um, interoperability between different devices or to be able to communicate with your, devi your IoT devices via, uh, via chat conversations. And uh, I gave a talk about XMPP uh, about three years ago at a phone conference, a kind of introductory talk where I go much more in detail about, about it. So there's a link. Oh. Um, this, the slides are live uh, over there, converse.js.org, forward slides, fastm27 with a dash, index HTML. Are they open for editing? Oh. No, no, not yet. <laughs> not currently. Uh, so, yeah, one of the first things you'll recognize when you're trying to integrate XMPP chat into a website is that uh, XMPP is a fundamentally different protocol and it expects you to have a a TCP socket connection to a port uh, that's different than um, your your web server ports, and um, the browser's sandboxing doesn't allow for these uh, TCP connections, and uh, doesn't have any APIs APIs for it. Um, additionally, the two protocols are conceptually different. So, for example, HTTP is stateless. Um, it's uh, request response based, so you can never get anything from a from a HTTP server that you didn't first send a request for, and it's also stateless because any request you send is fundamentally independent from any previous request you send, at least <coughs> on the protocol level. Uh, and also, generally, the connections are short-lived. So XMPP is stateful. Um, it's interactive and bidirectional. Which, what I mean by that is, you can at any single time receive data from an XMPP server unannounced and without having asked for it. Uh, and it therefore also requires, uh, it generally is dependent on a more long-running connection. So when we think about how to integrate XMPP into a web app, um, I'm going to split it up into two, a two areas or domains, uh, what I call front-end integration and back-end integration. Uh, here I have just a little graph where or graphic where I show your web application, web browser, and XMPP server. Um, generally, you will have uh, HTTP traffic between the web browser and your web application, or maybe WebSocket. Um, now we're bringing an XMPP server into the mix, and it's possible to have direct communication from your web browser to the XMPP server. Or I'll explain how that happens, um, bridging the problems I mentioned just before of the protocols being different conceptually. But you could also have communication directly between the web application, which is running on a server somewhere, and an XMPP server. And there might be reasons why you want to do that. So starting with the front-end integration, um, to bridge this problem of the protocols being different, um, you basically have two things you can do. You can, so to speak, tunnel XMPP through HTTP or you can do uh, XMPP over WebSocket. And uh, so the way you do the XMPP over HTTP is through a technique called BOSH. Stands for Bidirectional Streams over Synchronous HTTP. Uh, it's not XMPP specific, but um, it comes from the XMPP community. It's already since 2004, so it's really an established way of doing things. Uh, you do get this bidirectionality. In other words, you are able to receive data from the server <coughs> Um, in this case, a web server or a Bosch connection, so-called Bosch connection manager, um, and the way you do this is through long polling. And the way long polling works is um, generally uh, a web server, when it receives a request, it will serve, you know, fulfill the, the, the request and then quickly uh, return a response. 
With long polling, what the web server does is it holds onto the request and doesn't immediately return a response. And it waits until asynchronously uh, it receives data that is worthwhile, uh, that, that makes sense to return. For example, in the context of instant messaging, it would hold onto the request and wait until it has any instant messaging data to return, and then it will return a response to the web client. And immediately the web client will make another request. And uh, if there's, you have a timeout, so maybe 30, 60 seconds or so, um, if the timeout is reached, the web server will return an empty res uh, response. And again, you know, uh, the web client immediately makes a request. And you can also have multiple in parallel running request responses like that as well. So it supports session attach attachment and resumption, uh, which is important because we have this statelessness of the HTTP protocol, um, but you want to maintain your XMPP session across requests and also across page loads. So this is done with um, session and request tokens that you kind of have to send to the, with each request to maintain your session. And uh, it requires a connection manager. The connection manager is like basically a thing that sits between the XMPP server and the HTTP client. It speaks HTTP to the HTTP client and it speaks XMPP to the XMPP server. So it's like a, a translating uh, device or translating service. And it's built in with most XMPP servers. You generally don't have to worry about it uh, unless you m want to support m uh, many different servers, uh, then you might have to use a standalone one. The other technique is a WebSocket. Um, advantage of it is that it has less uh, transport overhead. You only have to establish one connection per page load. You don't have to establish a new socket connection for every request that you do, for example, of HTTP, which can become expensive if you have TLS uh, connections. Uh, it's bidirectional and it's basically emulating the TCP socket connection that you would have with XMPP in, in normal circumstances, but at the application level, which the, at the browser level. And it also has a quick session resumption. Uh, so if you reload the page, you can just quickly uh, reattach, so to speak, to your existing uh, session. Uh, but that's in a, a XMPP extension called uh, 0198 stream management. If you implement that, then you get that. Uh, so that's front end. Um, back end, there's basically three ways that you might communicate between your web application back end, your web, uh, web app, and um, XMPP server. Uh, the one would be to use Bosch, again, that I just explained. Um, another one would be to kind of have some kind of built in XMPP client using an XMPP library, where you, it would have to be then asynchronous, right? It would, uh, have to fulfill these requirements uh, mentioned earlier. And uh, a third way is to have HTTP calls between your um, web application and an XMPP server. If the XMPP server provides some kind of RESTful um, or JSON um, HTTP API, which a lot of them do. So the only reason why I know that people do Bosch communication between a backend and a XMPP server is just for a technique called pre-binding. <laughs> where you want to log in the user before the page loads so that um, you can kind of have one session. The user can log into your CMS or website or application and you do the pre-binding where it on the back end establishes an XMPP, XMPP session, session so that the user doesn't have to maintain another set of credentials for the XMPP server. There's a drawback to, that, that, to this and that is that if you want to do this, you need to have the credentials in plain text um, of the XMPP server because you need to be able to log the user in. So there are other ways of doing this um, that I think uh, in many cases are better. Um, you could, for example, do some kind of token-based authentication where you sign tokens with uh, some kind of private key and the XMPP server verifies that the token was signed with the right key and also has the right um, format. You could use um, various forms of external authentication whereby you um, hand over authentication, the, the XMPP server hands over authentication to some kind of external database or website. So for example, you could let the XMPP server authenticate against your own website. So in that way, the user's credentials for your website are the same credentials for the XMPP server. And they could also, if they have a mobile app, um, that has XMPP, they can use the website credentials to log in there and have chat and not have to worry about two sets of credentials. 
Um, or you can have some kind of external um, back end uh, like LDAP, SQL, or so on. Uh, so two more reasons uh, why you might want to share data between your web application back end and um, a, a XMP server is you might uh, have um, already some kind of concept of, let's say, conversations uh, on your website where you are creating conversations in some kind of CMS or so on. And now you want to make these conversations real time. Um, so in that case, you might want to keep a hold of this kind of concept of um, conversations in your web application and then mirror it or replicate it to the XMPP server. Um, in this case, you really have to think about atomicity. In other words, when you are creating a so-called conversation and you have to correspondingly create a chat room in your XMPP client, uh, XMPP server, excuse me, this has to be happen. This has to happen as one atomic as transaction, so that it cannot be split up because otherwise you're going to have situations eventually where the data is not <coughs> mirrored correctly. Uh, another question you might have to ask, ask yourself is, uh, can a, where is the canonical store? If if you're having it mirrored across two backends, you probably want one of them to be like the truth and eventually if something happens and you need to kind of regenerate the data, you have this one where you can kind of push it out back into, for example, the back end is your canonical store and you push out the data to the XMPP server. Um, another case which is similar but not exactly uh, is if you want to just have communication between the two services, but you don't want to store it on both of them. So a, a good example is, let's say you have uh, some kind of social networking features already in your website. So you have some kind of social graph or a context list or whatever, and you want to um, also present this context list in the context of XMPP or of your real-time chat application or real-time chat part of your app. Uh, that would mean that you would want the XMPP so-called contacts roster to have the same data, so you can tell the XMPP um, server to fetch this data from your web app. And there, for Procity XMPP server, for example, there is a module for that, which Matt Wild, um, the uh, creator of Procity, um, wrote, which I um, I use. And uh, yeah, that's a good example of that. Then coming to Converse JS, what is that? Uh, it's a, a, a chat application that runs in your browser. It uses Stroke.js, which I just heard the Jitsi Meet people also use uh, for their web app. Um, it, you can use it as a standalone application at converse.js.org. Um, that's kind of what it looks like. That's also the website. If you were to go there now, you can log in. If you have an XMPP account, you can also register a new account um, and, and, and use it. Uh, there's also a mobile version. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using it for mobile. There are mobile apps that are way better, but if you are in a bind or for whatever reason, you can also go to the mobile version of it and use it like that. It's uh, well, yeah, it's translated, very well tested. It supports both Bosch and WebSocket. Bosch works very well, by the way, um, and it's actually what I use most of the time. Uh, it can be integrated into any website, and uh, mainly for three reasons. Um, it's very customizable or configurable, so it has uh, this link goes to the config settings page of Converse where you can see all the configuration settings. And uh, through this you can turn things on and off or you can uh, configure how things work. You can also, um, uh, the features are all implemented as plugins. So you can take out any features um, and create a new build of the JavaScript, um, bun uh, JavaScript build and therefore have, you know, create your, customize it yourself. You can of course also write your own plugins to add uh, new features or to customize it. And if you don't want to use plugins, if you just want to use the, the full build, which is available via CDN, you can also just disable them through white and black lists. Um, the code is there, but I haven't added tests and it's not released. So that's why I'm saying coming soon. Um, so let me show why, the, or, or let me show that this is possible. This is Converse.js, uh, the website itself. Um, so you can see it's like overlaid. That of course makes it much easier to integrate into a website because you can have any kind of design or whatever and you can just overlay these things. Of course you can start it yourself as well. It's just HTML and CSS. Um, here's a full screen version I'm working on. Um, that's the same code base. It's just different CSS and a, a, a small plugin with a little bit of JavaScript. 
Um, it's not completely finished yet, but uh, it's getting there. Uh, same one. Uh, here it is in in Reddit. I can actually have it live as well. Um, so I, I made a little um, Chromium uh, plugin which just loads the JavaScript files. It's, two, uh, it's one JavaScript file and one CSS file. And it loads it in any website. And uh, you just then have chat. So, um, you know, I'm just going to spam the summer chat room. Um, uh, here it is running in Reddit. Um, I also have it in TweetDeck. It's basically any any website. Here's a little example of a CSS bug. So generally, um, uh, you know, there's little things like that that you might want to take a look at when you're integrating it. Um, yeah. So there's that. Uh, what I also sh I also this these slides are a website. Here I integrated into the slides as well. This is a so-called embedded. It's just a single chat room. It's, uh, the chat room is called anonymous. That's why it says anonymous there. And you're also logging in anonymously. Luckily, nobody has put anything inappropriate there. Um, and so it's running in the slides. Um, this is an open source project. Uh, I've gotten many bug, bug fixes and uh, pull requests over the years. And I'm very grateful and thankful for all of those. Um, I'm very happy to get more people involved. Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's really a lot to do. Here are all kinds of things that um, one could work on. Um, I'm seriously considering starting Google Summer of Code projects for uh, Omemo encryption and Mix. Mix is like a, a new um, conversation pr uh, protocol that uh, is in the pipeline that's kind of basically being implemented now. And yeah, um, also designers. I don't know if there's any, any designers here, but there's really a lot that could be worked on, and I'd be uh, happy to work together with other people more on this. There are also other software in a similar vein. Um, so there's two other libraries, for example, besides Strophe, uh, which uh, Stanza.io and XMPP for the web. Um, Stanza IO is used in OTalk and in Kaiwa. Kaiwa is a single page app. Um, I don't really, I'm not going to go into detail there, but I link to them. You can check them out and you're welcome to compare all the different uh, options uh, and their strengths and, and weaknesses. And uh, that's basically it. These are my um, details. Uh, if I cannot answer any questions now, you're welcome to reach out to me. It's my email address is also my XMPP handle, and uh, I'm happy to to answer any questions or to to talk about anything. Yeah, any? I don't know if we have time. We have three minutes. Yeah, so we we'll also have a moment now for questions if anybody has some. Okay, a bit uh, naive question for me. I'm not uh, so. I don't know these things so good. The Slack, what are you doing is different from Slack, let's say. Um, XMPP is a is a open standard standardized protocol that's also federated. So um, it allows you you can run your own private XMPP server, and then you could create your own Slack kind of service. Um, one of the big advantages of XMPP is that you can connect. It's like email. So if I have my XMPP server and you have your XMPP server, or you're using someone else's, I can send you a message. Um, so it's not siloed like so so many of the commercial offerings. Um, besides that, um, XMPP has certain ways of it expects things to be done, um, that uh, like certain concepts. Slack uh, has helped to kind of make people think uh, anew about how chat should work. Um, for example, also with mobile connections and so on, the idea that you are always in a conversation and always online, not online, but you're always part of a conversation is kind of something that uh, is relatively recent. Before, there was this idea, like in IRC also, that you join and then you're in or you're not. But you're not like a member of a room even if you're not online. So that's where, where Mix comes in. It's, Mix is, is partly, I think, a response to, um, to innovation that has happened. Um, but it's, so it's kind of like Slack. It's just generally 
free and open source and uh, doesn't lock people in. There is a mother mode, let's say, um, like open source. Sorry, that's my own, yeah? <laughs> let's say mother most uh, is like Slack. Okay, it's not about uh, open source only. I just want to know the functionality that you uh, uh, produce uh, and uh, uh, give the people yeah, um, so you could, like, because it's a, a communications protocol, you can also use it, uh, for example, for other kind of, kinds of signaling. So to have de devices talk to one another or to... Uh, one more question. Yeah. We cannot take more questions. Ah, sorry. Yeah. We have a super tight schedule. Okay. Sorry. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Thank you.